Hi there, welcome to the Schwoven's Nest. My name is Sandra, and I'm so glad you're here. This project is using some scrap pieces of wood. I actually only had to cut one of them and those spindles that you see. Now, I'm not sure where those spindles came from. They might have been from a table or a chair. I'm not sure. But anyhow, I'm going to go ahead and glue all of these pieces together first, and then I'm going to pin them with my nailer. The type of glue I'm using today is Gorilla Glue, but it's very similar to E6000. And if you've ever worked with E6000, you know that you need to either clamp the pieces together and let them fully dry overnight, or you need to use something else like hot glue to kind of hold it together temporarily while the glue has a chance to set. What I'm going to do, as I mentioned earlier, is use my nailer to pin them all together. Now I'm working on the wheel. This is a round coaster that comes in a pack of four from the Dollar Tree. I'm just adding some tiny little pieces of wood just to make the center portion a little bit thicker so it will stay nice and snug in between the two spindles. I've wiggled the wheel in between the spindles. You can see here, I'm just kind of wedging it in, getting it into the position I want, and then I'm just gonna put a load of hot glue there just to secure it in place. Yes, you'll see the hot glue, but I'm not concerned about that. I'm going to paint it later. I want the wheel to be brown like the spindle, so I'm just using some acrylic paint in somewhat of a matching color, and I'm just gonna give this one coat. It's going to look like it's been stained. Here you can see how I put the spindles together. They're on the bottom of my little box and I just pinned them in and then I used the ends of two other spindles, cut them down a little bit shorter to make the little support legs at the back. At first I thought I was going to leave the wheelbarrow rustic, but then I decided I think I need to paint it white. And I'm glad I did because I think it complements the dark brown of the handles and the wheel much better. So just a coat of white chalk paint. You could use latex paint or acrylic paint. This type of wood is a fence board and it just soaks everything in really well. I wanted to make it a little bit more farmhouse looking. So instead of leaving it plain, I'm going to go ahead and add this leaf stencil. This is something that I created on my Cricut and I will see if I can have it as a free printable for you down in my description box. I'm just using a makeup sponge to apply some black paint and because the grooves in these boards are really deep, it comes out really pretty. I just love the distressed look of this. If this is your first time visiting my channel, welcome. I'm so glad you decided to click on my video. If this is what you like and you want to see more, I would love it if you could hit that red subscribe button and stick around a while. Now I have three more spindles that are a little bit longer and this wood round that I picked up at my local Dollarama. It was a sign. I sanded the paper off as much as I needed to. And now I'm going to use the same glue to pre-glue these in place. And I let them set for a good hour before I did anything else with them. Once I was able to flip it over without the little legs falling off, I used my nailer to hold it in place. Now, if you don't have a nailer, you could definitely pre-drill some holes and just add a screw. Make sure that you sink it below the level of the wood circle because then you can just add a little bit of wood filler or some spackle and smooth out the top. So I'm back inside now and this is what this stand or stool or whatever you want to call it, little mini table, looks like upside down with the spindles on. I am using some black paint and this is folk art multi-surface paint. It's just what I happen to have on hand. It covers really, really well, but it doesn't stick to slick surfaces very well. So later on, it 
when you see me working with this paint and another project, you're going to see some of the paint kind of come off the spindles because they still, of course, have all their varnish. But for this project, it's perfect. I'm going to go ahead and paint the whole thing, top and bottom, in black. Originally, I thought I was going to paint it all white and then distress it back to the black and some of the brown on the spindles, but I decided to change things up and I'm just going to be painting the very top of this white. So in hindsight, I didn't need to paint the top of it black, but oh well, that's how it happens when you're crafting. Your mind kind of changes as you go. Once the paint was completely dry again, I am using a stencil for this. This is a French script stencil with some type of stamp on it, and I picked it up on Amazon. If I can find it again, I will link it for you down in my description box. And again, I'm just using a makeup sponge and some black paint, and I'm going to go ahead and stencil the whole thing on. And I think this turned out absolutely gorgeous. I really love this one. I found this beautiful basket at the thrift store for $2.99, so I'm going to put some little spindle feet on it. I'm going to use the same Gorilla Glue, but this time I'm going to add hot glue so I can have an opportunity for the Gorilla Glue to set up. And using hot glue on a basket like this is the perfect combination. So just a blob in the center will hold it in place, and I'm going to just set it aside to dry. I did end up taking this out to my garage and pinning it with my nailer after everything was all said and done simply because the bottom of this basket is kind of flimsy so they were a little wobbly and I just wanted to, them to be a little bit more secure. I wanted the feet to have a little bit of a darker color so I'm using my folk art antiquing wax and I'm going to just paint it on and set it aside to dry. Now when you're using antique wax just like this it does take a couple of days for it to fully dry so just be aware of that if you're using this type of technique. I love how this basket turned out and I think it looks really pretty with some of these florals in it. I found this beautiful hummingbird. I think it's supposed to be some type of feeder that you would hang on your wall. It's super heavy and I think it's made out of concrete, I think. Anyway, it's just really heavy. What I'm doing here is adding some Gorilla Glue and some hot glue to a chunky spindle that I already attached to a wood round. And now I'm going to just let this set and cure for at least a couple of hours before I touch it again. Here's what it looks like all put together and I decided to try and mimic the same kind of colors and tones of the hummingbird little stand there. So I'm going to start by painting the bottom portion gray. This is sort of a medium tone gray and I could already tell by putting this on that it was really not the same shade of gray or even the tone. My color is a little bit more blue and the other one is a little bit more I don't know what you would call it. But anyhow, I'm going to go ahead and finish painting this up and then use some different colors to dry brush and make it look a little bit similar. I'm starting out with some white paint just to lighten it up a little bit. And I'm going to go up the spindle portion as well. Then I decided to use a little bit of a green eucalyptus kind of color. This does have a little bit of a green tone to it. So adding that color kind of made it blend in a little bit better. The last thing I did was just add a little bit more of the gray. Some of the green went on a little heavier than I wanted, so I'm just blending it all in a little bit more. I think this turned out absolutely gorgeous, and it is a beautiful piece just to display just as is. Thank you. 
Here's a quick picture of the Gorilla Glue that I'm using. It's called Clear Grip. I'm going to be, of course, creating some candlesticks. I don't think any spindle video would be complete without some type of candlesticks. I'm going to go ahead and take these chunky white ones with some of the Gorilla Glue and just put them onto these four by fours. These are two by fours cut in four inch by four inch pieces. I found a pack of these saucers. I'm not sure what they would have been used for, probably little appetizer dishes, but I'm gonna go ahead and glue those to the top of this candlestick. And that will be the holder for either a candle or a floral arrangement or whatever you want to put on the top. This pair of candlesticks is going to stay white, but I did need to give the already painted portion at least one coat because my color of white was a little bit different than what was already on the spindle. So just one full coat with some chalk paint, it gives it really good coverage, especially on that raw wood. For this pair of candlesticks, I'm going to be using some rounds and these I got at Michael's. So these are just the plain ones, but I have seen these at the Dollar Tree sometimes. Mine just don't happen to be carrying them anymore. These smaller ones have a little bit of a mitered or beveled edge. I'm not sure what you would call that. I'm going to glue those two together and that's just going to make a nice bottom piece for the spindle. Again, I'm just using the glue and then I'm going to use my nailer to nail everything together. I painted these black using the same folk art multi-surface paint. It is in a satin finish. It's the only finish it's available in. So you can see a little bit of shine happen in there. I'm okay with that because I'm gonna be going and putting this antiquing wax on top of it and then wiping off the excess. That will dull the shine down a little bit and it will also give it a beautiful old and deep rich black look. When it came to doing the spindle portion, I did get a little bit of the black paint coming off when I was wiping off the antiquing wax. I'm okay with that because I thought it gave it more of a rustic look, but if you would prefer to have the solid black underneath, then I would suggest you sealing it first before you put the antique wax. You could do that with some clear wax or some matte clear spray, whatever you happen to have on hand, but I really love how this turned out. I hope you enjoyed my spindle trash to treasure projects today. I had a great time creating them for you and I'm so excited to display some of them in my home. If you like the video, I would love it if you could give me a thumbs up that gets me noticed more on YouTube and helps my channel grow. If you haven't already subscribed, please do so. Hit that button. The black arrow will tell you exactly where to click. Thank you to all of my current viewers and subscribers. I really appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you so much for watching and have a wonderful day. Bye for now.